to another Small Gold live stream. It is September 7th, 2019. It is a Saturday, so you know what that means. It is Saturday Night Silver with Small Gold. And tonight, we're going to take a look at Indian Silver Imports, the topic of tonight's episode. But by no means, the only topic we're going to cover is Indian Silver Imports soar as gold imports plummet. Surprise, surprise. We're going to talk about India and the way the Indian gold imports, silver imports work generally follows price. And we'll see how while Indians love their gold, they don't like those high prices. So gold imports are down to their lowest level since 2016 while Indian silver imports are at a high not seen since December of 2015. We're going to take a look at some of those charts. So let's get into the Indian silver story. But then we're also going to take a look at the silver stockpiles and a bunch of other stuff for silver tonight. So let's first start out with Indian silver. And as I mentioned many times on this show, Indians are not necessarily silver stackers. They don't prepare for the collapse. They don't view silver as something that is going to protect them against inflation. I mean, there might be some that do that. But the bulk of silver buying in India is for silverware and jewelry. And there's some investment demand. And then there's also, obviously, the industrial demand. But for the most part, silver is purchased in India for beauty, for adornment. Um, they don't for gifts. Uh, gold is really the go-to metal for preserving wealth, holding on to it, giving it away for gifts, uh, for weddings, and so on. But because Indians now have more disposable income, silver is a great thing to have. I mean, you can, if you're into jewelry, you can just make a tremendous um, portfolio of different types of jewelry uh, given the price of jewelry is relatively inexpensive, you can also create a, an entire silverware set. I mean, they're popular in the middle class in India. So silver is definitely has, and we're going to see the charts, has been on the up and up in terms of consumption. Now, they do have an Indian silver solar program that's going on. They have the world's largest uh, solar plant there. Um, but solar power is using less and less silver per solar panel so the demand for that is somewhat limited and they will be able to use even less through technology through thrifting through nanoparticles so the real driver of silver in india is not stacking it's not industry it has been and this is borne out by refinitive metals indian retail consumption demand for silver jewelry and investment increased by 20 percent for jewelry and eight percent for investment, but as you can see, the two big drivers on that chart, retail consumption, which includes jewelry, that is the largest demand component. Second largest is silverware. Now, no one in the United States, and when I use these words, no one, I don't mean there's not a person, but very few people in the good old US of A anymore buy silverware, use silverware, give silverware, but as you can see, not only do they do it in India, it's on the rise, and so is silver jewelry. The third largest component, which is half of jewelry, is investment. And if you think about investment, they're not talking about buying coins. Coins is very low on the totem pole there, as you can see. Uh, it's down under 200 tons a year. In fact, it is uh, the lowest demand component for silver. And industrial silver is pretty much steady. So the big driver of this increase in silver is for, from jewelry, up 20% this year over last year in the first half. And this is before. This is through June. Wait till you see the July number. The July import number, as I mentioned, was very, very large. It is um, the largest since December 2016. It is a stunning number. Drum roll, please. Well, let's take a look. Let's get that chart up there on the board. 1,000. 41 tons of silver drug into the Indian nation. Now, India has some silver mining production. They're not like what they are with gold, but they don't have any. They have, a, I think they're 11th or 12th in the world. It's not that large. It's not that small. They do have an Indian 
uh, silver mining productive capacity, but uh, 1,041 tons. Anyone know what that might be in ounces? Quick calculation. That's over 33 million ounces in one month. Now remember, there's only been a few months, a few years in the United States where American Silver Eagles have topped 33 million. We had a couple of years in the 40s, one around 38. But generally, I mean, this year there's less than 20 million American Silver Eagles sold. Last year, less than 20 million as well. So in one month, 33 million ounces pouring into silver, into silver pouring into India. And as I mentioned, this is a factor, I believe, that gold, while India is, uh, silver is not a substitute for gold in India, gold is very expensive now, especially in the Indian rupee. We're going to show even how silver is getting a little pricey in the rupee. But um, gold, very, very expensive, all-time highs, and um, Indians are price sensitive on the gold. But if the economy is doing well and they've got disposable income, why not pick up a little silver jewelry? So you can see silver can rise on not only on industrial demand, but also on jewelry demand, or at least demand can be increased. And the real kicker for silver is if you get that somewhat perfect storm where you have constant industrial supply demand, you have a growing silverware and silver jewelry demand, which will start to come down if the price gets too high, but add into that some type of investment safe haven demand, which silver, despite what the people in America think, the silver stackers, universally silver is not viewed that way. I know you listen, many of you, each and every night to Silver Pumper channels trying to tell you that silver is a store of value and that everyone loves silver. It's not true. We've already mentioned on this channel that the Chinese do not hold silver in such regard. Americans actually buy more ounces of, in, of investment silver than the Chinese do. And the United States population is four times less than the Chinese. Now, obviously, the Chinese buy far in excess of the amount of gold that Americans do. So the point being is that if silver is going to catch an investment bid, it's generally going to be in the United States. Uh, it's hard to pick up an investment bid in Europe because they've got the VAT. But again, if the price goes high enough, there is going to be some FOMO going on there. But look at that, 1,041 tons. Uh, the record was back in the end of 2014. They had two months in a row, 1170 and 1250. And you can see 2015, that year, they had three months over... Um, a thousand tons and that was when silver was really really cheap that was 2015 but look in the last 12 months we see a big increase in silver we've got an October last year 1031 a little drop off in the middle of this part of the year but 1041 in the most recently reported month of July now let's take a look where does that put Indian silver imports on the grand scale over the last 20 years annually while we're at 4,531 4, tons, that is looking pretty sharp because if you take that on an annualized basis, it's about you know almost 400 tons a a month. If you do that uh, all year, you know you're going to get a pretty pretty hefty sized. Um, oh, it's about 650 tons. I'm sorry, a month. You're going to get about 77. 7,800 tons of silver demand, import demand in India this year, which would make it the second largest. Last year was the second largest at 7,654. We seem to be on an accelerating track. I'd expect if the gold price continues to rise, Indians will slam on the brakes on imports. And uh, probably if silver gets in the mid-20s, you might see India slam on the brakes there. Many are probably buying now. They're not, they can see the writing on the wall that silver may go higher. It may not, but I think they're not necessarily arbitraging this. But I think chances are right now, if you're buying silver for silverware or silver jewelry, chances are the price might run ahead of you a lot more, a greater chance than it might, you know, get cut in half. So I think that uh, we'll probably see another strong August month when those numbers are reported. All right, what else? Now, let's take a look at Indian, the price of silver in India in the rupees, obviously, because that's, we'll take a look at it also in um, 
We'll also take a look at it in um, US dollars, but let's take a look now at Indian silver rupee prices. Let me find that. Where did it go? There we are. Pull that up. By the way, all the charts, smallgold.com the next day. Usually I get them out the evening when I create these bit shoots and YouTubes. Uh, so if you go to the Small Gold website, there's generally a link below the bit shoot and YouTube of how to get there. If I haven't posted the link yet, just go to smallgold.com. You should easily find it. But this one will be called um, Indian Silver Imports Soar as Gold Imports Plummet. And all these charts will be there. You can look at them. If they've got a Small Gold logo on them, you can copy them, do what you want with them. Uh, you can sell them, but uh, for your own benefit, your own use, you can use them. You can use them in your own websites or Facebook pages or tweet them out. As long as they have the small gold logo on them, their charts either I've prepared or that I have um, commissioned to be prepared. Um, this one I had commissioned to be prepared from Nick Laird. Now this one is showing uh, silver and Indian rupees and you can see that it's not at 2015 lows, but it's also not at the 2011 high. So you're at about 1400, no 1300 rupees per ounce and that's about where the price went in rupees in 2016 mid 2016 when in the US it went to about 20 21 dollars obviously the rupee is depreciating a little faster versus silver than the dollar is so they're very close now to their high their recent high in 2016 now let's take a look let's move away from the subcontinent and uh, take a look at how silver is doing in some other key currencies uh we know we got some aussies on the line so let's take a look at the australian dollar and silver any of you who are from australia following gold you know that gold has blown past its all-time high uh silver not so much silver about 26 27 28 dollars uh recently hit over 28 dollars but with the pullback the last couple of days it fell back to about 26.50 $26.50. Now remember the all-time high in Australia was closer to $45.50. Uh, so you can see there's still upside bargain in silver if, as I suspect, uh, silver catches the same bid that gold's catching. And the reason gold is rising is on the safe haven, negative interest rates, the whole where do we put our money when we have a negative interest rate environment, deposit rates going negative, Lots of debt in the system around the world, worries about China, worries about trade wars, and so on. Silver does have that investment component. And uh, if it does catch a bid, then you know there might be some upside in the Australian dollar, given that gold has already peaked. Silver right now is still almost $20 below its peak, $15, $20 below its 2011 peak. And as I mentioned, gold is well past its 2011 peak. We got some Canadians. Let's take a look at what's going on in Canada. Same thing. Uh, it's about $24 an ounce. Uh, had gotten almost at $26. But again, the top price in the Canadian dollar silver was about $46 an ounce. Uh, you know, you're $20, $22 away from that right now. Again, these charts are on smallgold.com. Uh, we got some English PayPal. Let's take a look at the pound sterling, which has taken a pounding lately. But even with the pounding of the pound, silver is not even at its Brexit, the, the election night high, or during that summer of 2016. Silver got up as high as 16 pounds per ounce, and right now it's back down to 1475. It was almost at 16 pounds an ounce a couple of days ago. When silver peaked at like 1935, 1940, $19.40 in the United States. But the peak for silver in British pounds is 29 pounds. So again, you are also far away from that all-time high. If we continue to see strength in gold, I expect to see strength in silver. Now the last two days we've seen weakness in both metals. And obviously bigger weakness in silver than we did in gold. Now who else do we got on the line here? Do we got anyone from China? This is the last one we'll look at. If we've got any gold back yuan fans, um, Chinese yuan not doing very well against the dollar, against other currencies, but pretty much the same story as the Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, the Indian rupee. 
just about at its 2016 peak. You're looking at about 130 uh, RMB to get yourself an ounce of silver. Uh, not a big demand of silver. In fact, I don't have the numbers tonight, but I've shown in the past. China has a decent silver mining production, third largest in the world. I've shown you those charts before. Um, they export silver. They don't care. It's not something that they're hoarding like they are gold. China has the number one gold mining production, over 400 tons a year, and they keep every last ounce there. Um, silver, not so much. They export good chunks of their silver, and uh, silver's not that expensive in China right now. Now, it's interesting. If China were to catch the silver bug, they'd start listening to silver pumper channels. That would be a big strain on demand because China right now is not really not causing any strains the way India might be doing because um, they've got silver mining production and they're not voracious buyers of silver. Now let's go back to Los Estados Unidos or in Italian, Gli Stati Uniti or in French, Gli Stati Unis and look at what's going on with the silver price, the gold price and here is your longer term chart, same chart and you can see almost identical to the Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar, Chinese yen, the British pound. Although gold, silver got a little higher in 2016. It's got to like 21.75 or something. Right now we're at 18.15. So we we're far below, not far below, but pretty far below the um, 2016 high. But we were close. As I mentioned, just I think Thursday or Wednesday we're at 1940. 1945 during the day we're now we've dropped well over a dollar and that's not atypical for um, silver to do that uh, but last 10 years silver is down still about 11 12 percent since this time 10 years ago let's take a look at the one year chart it's a little more promising there you have your one year chart if you can see it looks pretty good. It almost looks like you can see that 1935. It looks like the end, but right along the side there, you can see a drop down. It's a pretty straight vertical drop from 1935 to 1815. But we had a nice vertical climb from 17 to 1850. So I would imagine that uh, it looks like 17 is probably the support level. I'm not a chartist, but it looks like that's where it held out for a while before it made its big run. I think if it bounces along ahead of that price then and gold goes higher then you might see the price of silver rise now one thing i someone asked me we look at the gold silver ratio we're gonna look at that right now but that's what i want to talk about because we've discussed that so often on this channel the unsustainable gold silver ratio silver is rarer than gold and then silver it has to none of that i don't believe in any of that i believe that the gold silver ratio and i said this even on sgt report was totally sustainable, totally justified, not out of whack, on the basis that silver was getting zero investment demand and basically was just plodding along on the basis that there was some industrial use and there was some jewelry demand and silverware demand in India that wasn't really going higher and solar panel demand wasn't increasing and electronics demand was, has been down the last 10 years. So why would silver be rising? when gold was actually not doing that well, but was doing okay. So remember, when people are concerned about safe havens and stashing their money away or their, their wealth away, they go to gold first. Now you say, oh, but I stack silver. You're in a minority. The majority of the money flows into gold. That's just factual. You could say, you know people that save in silver. You listen to pumper channels that tell you silver is the best thing on the inverted pyramid and no one understands. Well, the point is that the gold market has been moderately strong up to the last six months and has been very strong the last six months. But when the gold market, in terms of price, is moderately strong, there's no need to go into silver. There's just not the investment and demand uh, to warrant it. But when the gold market gets, the gold investment market gets into overdrive, that's when people start to look at silver, and that's started to happen the last couple of weeks. So I always said that the gold-silver ratio would remain high and would not start to come down. 
and was sustainable until and unless, or less than until, gold established itself in a bull market, got over 1500 and that was my prediction at the beginning of the year. If gold did that, stayed above 1500 was looking like it was grinding higher, that we would see over $20 silver in 2019, despite everybody thinking that all I do is bash silver. I don't. I bash bad silver analysis that constantly says, silver is set to skyrocket. Silver is rarer than gold. Gold silver ratio unsustainable. Comex collapse. I don't believe any of that. JP Morgan bought silver eagles. Complete, absolute, cow's utter nonsense. All right. There is your 10 year silver. But the, this is not the ratio I wanted to talk about. As I mentioned, the ratio I wanted to take a look at is there's been some increased interest in platinum because the platinum price has started to stir. And platinum, if you think the gold silver ratio has been, quote, unsustainable and out of whack, it has been higher. I mean, it's been over 100 in the past uh, 50, 60 years. It has gotten over 100. Um, it is high historically, but average is about 65. The plat the gold platinum ratio, on the other hand, and then we're going to do the platinum silver ratio, has become what you would normally consider out of whack. Platinum has generally been the last 100, 200 years more expensive than gold. In fact, that's why when they have these standards, obviously you have gold, silver, and bronze metals. But oftentimes when you have tiered platforms for, for example, credit cards, the platinum level is higher than the gold because platinum is more expensive. And the last 10 years was really no different. Platinum was generally higher than gold. But starting around 2000, mid-2015, it looked like, you know, there had been times where platinum might dip below gold a little bit, but not for long, as you can see on the 10-year chart. But then in 2015, platinum went below gold and stayed below gold. And when gold started to move higher, platinum didn't move at all. It's only, again, in the last week or two that platinum started to move. And you can see on the far end of the chart, platinum starting to move up with gold, but gold obviously moving up a lot more the last month and a half than platinum has. And so the gold platinum ratio, which is normally less a fraction of one, it's normally like 0 0.9, 0 0.8 to one, has become 1.61 1, to one. And it gotten as high as 1.8 to one, which meant that gold was almost twice the price of platinum when platinum is normally a time and a half the price of gold. So that is a, out of whack ratio but there's reasons for it platinum is not considered mm, historically where you park your money when you got uh financial issues platinum is not as liquid as a market there's a lot of jewelry demand in platinum like there is in gold but gold demand for jewelry is always in platinum demand somewhat of a it's not a it's not a given like your go-to metal you're going to get a platinum engagement ring you may you may not people get gold rings all the time gold necklaces people don't generally think let me go out and get myself a platinum um a platinum ring a platinum necklace a pa and, and and because platinum isn't really even that attractive uh it's a dense metal silver is better looking if you look at the two uh platinum doesn't tarnish the way silver does but you shined up silver is the most reflective metal it's much more beautiful so i can see why the jewelry demand isn't there and as i mentioned is Jewelry is a, in many respects, a discretionary purchase, but it's also subject to the vagaries of taste. And platinum goes in and out of taste. The, the Japanese liked it in the 1980s and 90s when they had money. And then it became, that eh, it's a little too flashy. They just stopped buying it. Looks like they're buying it again the last year, which is interesting. And the Chinese took a shine to it. Around the time when China started to take off as a... Uh, as a nation where the average guy or gal would have some money and maybe even starting to get the nouveau riche in China in 2000, 2001, 2002, they would splurge on, hey, you know, I can do even better than gold. I got platinum. But um, I do think that platinum starts to get the same safe haven bid that silver gets. Again, small market. If it starts to move up, people look at platinum, they say, you know, there's 
what, only eight, 10 million ounces of this stuff somewhere in the world. And uh, maybe I want a piece of that. So gold platinum ratio is still elevated, but let's take a look. And this one is the platinum silver ratio. This chart courtesy of Nick Laird. Now I'll have to I'll have to walk you through this, but this will show you that actually the platinum silver ratio is even more out of whack than the gold silver ratio, which I believe the gold silver ratio was justifiable. The platinum I think got a little out of hand because uh, got a little out of hand. Uh, it got a little out of hand because uh, palladium took off, and there was some industrial issues why that happened. Platinum went out when there was some diesel fuel issues and in Germany. But uh, if you look at this now, the one to look at, the, the the line to look at, I wish Nick had made this in the two charts, but I guess if you want them both in one place, they're here. You want to look at the platinum silver ratio, and that is going to be the blue line. Now, the blue lines, uh, vertical, what you need to do is go to the far right where the numbers go from uh, negative... Uh, they go from 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. The top far right is up all the way up to 115. Okay, that's going to be your platinum silver ratio. So as high as 115 to 1 or as low as 30 to 1. And the high on this chart going back to 2009 was about ooh, over 100 to 1. So at one point platinum was priced 100 to 1 um, to silver. The low was in 2011, was at about 38.39. And it looks like it kind of averages in the 65, 75 to 1. But right now, you can see is at a multi-year low, it got as low as about 48 to 1. And it hasn't been that low since, you know, 2013, 14. So the platinum silver ratio... I would say platinum showing that it's even more undervalued than silver. I'm not suggesting you go out and buy platinum or silver. I'm just pointing out that uh, platinum took a bigger whacking than silver the past few years. Now, the dollar index, which is another, which is another um, issue here. Um, this one ties in to this the narrative we were talking about the other day which is the dollar can rise gold can rise silver can rise everything could rise but to a point so for example the dollar index can rise the stock markets can rise but at some point the stock market could become overvalued and at another point if the dollar index gets too strong that's going to cause problems for the United States for exports and it's going to cause problems for the rest of the world because they run on dollars, they owe dollars, and they won't be able to pay their debts. So it's not like the United States can win anything by having its dollar too strong and say, hey, we crushed everybody. The dollar index just doubled. It's up 20, 30, 40 percent. No, that gets turned on yourself. So you cannot have in today's world a currency that's too strong. Trump knows this. That's so why Trump is pounding on the Fed, telling the Fed, knock it off, we, we, the dollar is too strong. So there will come a point in this, if things continue along their way, where it's possible that the dollar, that the stock market, gold, silver, and possibly cryptocurrencies can all rise, but there is a cap on the dollar rising. There is no such cap on silver or gold, at least nothing near where they are now. Now, unlike in 2013, when gold and silver were still relatively elevated, the United States and the Fed did not want gold especially to continue to go higher because it was undermining the dollar. And the dollar index, as you can see now, look at the blue line. That shows you the dollar index. Now, the dollar index had gotten as low as in the low 70s, 72, 73. And silver, look at silver, I don't have gold on this chart, was all the way up to almost $50 an ounce. That was a warning sign. Warning, warning, Will Robinson. That was basically saying the dollar is on its way out. You guys are doing QE. People are rushing into gold and silver. 
it's game over. And and that is where, you know, the, the original pumper argument was absolutely correct. You were not wrong to think that the dollar's days were, could be numbered. This was unprecedented. We had the financial crisis. And the response to the financial crisis was to print money, to bring interest rates down to zero, and to buy government bonds and agency securities and to, and to bail out the banks and buy their bad paper for 100 cents on the dollar. And how was that done? Just print up the money at the Federal Reserve. So the dollar index fell, and that's the blue line. You can see the far left of the chart. Silver rose, gold also rose at the same point. And that was dangerous because if that continued, then confidence in the dollar would have been lost. Well, today it's an entirely different situation. Yes, the United States continue to borrow money, its fiscal policy, we still have trillion dollar deficits. We still have unfunded liabilities, 150 million, 200 million. We got student loan debt. We've got uh, auto debt. We got consumer debt. We've got pension debt. We've got states debt. We, I understand all that. But the point being is the rest of the world has even more now, which it didn't have at the time. And the rest of the world's monetary policies through the ECB, the Bank of Japan, People's Bank of China, all have lower interest rates and they're also doing far more stimulus. The United States Fed isn't doing any stimulus really right now compared to ECB is buying corporate bonds. Bank of Japan has bought up all the Japanese bonds and bought up uh, half of the ETFs in the country. Swiss National Bank is buying Nat NASDAQ stocks and unicorn stocks. People's Bank of China has doubled what the rest of the world has borrowed and they're building bridges to nowhere, working on infrastructure projects, subsidizing losses in their export. China has made itself into a massive debt-based Ponzi scheme. So that is why the dollar index now go over to 2017. The blue line, look where it is now. It's way, way up there. It's way ahead of, um, even when it fell in 2018, it only fell below 90. You can see that drop there. But the dollar index, since the U.S., the Fed stopped QE. You can see the line went straight up, and it really hasn't come back down to the QE era period. So the dollar index has remained above 90. is average about 98, 95, 98, and right now it's at about 98, 99. So the dollar index really, you know, it might be able to go at 105, 110, but there's got to be a point where they're going to want to cap that Either the Fed will start slashing interest rates or Trump will yell and scream or he'll threaten the default on bonds. <laughs> There's something to, to knock the, the, the dollar index down. So my point being is the dollar is strong and silver is weak versus the dollar. So they're right now, I don't think they have any incentive to cap silver or gold other than to the extent that, not that it's a reflection on the dollar, because they actually want the dollar to come down a bit, but it might be taking some investment money away. It might be viewed as an indicator, counter indicator to the stock market. So that'd be one reason why they might want to be, maybe that's what was going on the last couple of days with the margin increases. Now, as to the margin increases, we didn't discuss this. I think it was Thursday, or yeah, they announced on Thursday and on Friday they were increasing the margin by about 20%, 20% on the, uh, the silver contracts. And generally, that's just neutral. That applies to whether you're long or short. However, when I talked about this, I didn't quite fully explain it. I spoke conclusorily that this was going to potentially impact the, um, the longs, meaning that if you were long on margin, and now you have this 20% uh, increase, you would uh, most likely either close out your position and or um, realize you, you can't, you don't want to pay to support the position, or even if you do want to pay and you can't afford to support the position, you realize others won't be able to, and therefore uh, you'll sell and others will sell and the price will go down. That's kind of what happened on Friday. Well, you say, well, the same thing can happen with the shorts. Ah, the reason it, the reason I said it would happen with the longs and not the shorts and not equally is if you remember our charts, when we look at, I wonder if I have it today. I don't know if I have it today. Uh, yeah, I do. The open interest. Okay. One thing you have to remember in general 
the larger traders, the commercials, are generally short silver. Unless it's, the price is going down for so long. That's just how they play their positions. Well, if the commercials are the ones short silver and they get hit, they also got hit with the, the big margin increase. They have the cash. I mean, they it's not like, oh, J.P. Morgan, they can't afford, you know, whatever few million dollars it is they have to support, whatever open position they have. They just pay it. And they know the fact that it's, it's money well spent because they know on the other side, some of them aren't going to pay it and they're going to close down their long position and that's going to make their shorts more valuable. So the last couple of days, that's what happened. The price was 1940. Maybe they were getting burned on their shorts. And the CME group comes to the rescue and says, ah, up in the, the requirement for margin, all the long margin traders say, yeah, we can't compete with this. Uh, we're either not going to pay or we know others aren't going to pay. So we're going to sell either to pay for our positions or just to get out because we know the price is going to fall. And then the commercial shorts, they just pony up the money and it's money well spent because it means that they can pay, the others can't, and they make money as the price goes down. All right, so let's get back to that chart because there's a couple of other things I wanted to mention about it, as they say in, who says a boot? That's your Canadians. It's funny, Canadians, a lot, maybe they know now if they're South Park and everything, but I used to work, when I was a lawyer, I remember I used to meet Canadians and they didn't introduce themselves as Canadian. They were here and there, especially in England. And then they, you, you would hear them talk. And then I'd say, what part of Canada are you from? How do you know I'm from Canada? Because <laughs> you'd hear them. They would say a boot. And no one says a boot in America. What's this all about? Um, all right. So that's how you can tell a Canadian. Spot the Canadian. What's this all about? Uh, dollar index. Okay. So the point is, I was saying that the dollar can rise and so can silver and gold at the same time. Back over to 2011, what was happening? Dollar index dropping, silver rising. Do you see it? Do you see on the far left? You see silver spiking, the dollar going down. A very classic way of looking at gold that you've probably been taught is that gold is the inverse of the dollar. Mm, kind of. I would say gold is the inverse of fiat currencies. The dollar is its own it's his own uh, kettle of fish here because sometimes the dollar and gold can rise at the same time. So can silver. Take a look at now the next where I have the red lines in 2016. You can see from 2016 to mid 2016, silver rising, gold was rising too. You see the same thing with the dollar. Why is that? Why were both of them rising at the same time? The concept of safe haven, oddly enough, does apply to the United States dollar. The rest of the world gets nervous. They buy treasuries. They buy dollars. So that was the Brexit era. Silver shot up. The dollar shot up. Gold shot up. But remember, gold and silver, I mean, uh, the dollar can be capped, will be capped if it gets too high. But in this case, silver and gold also got capped precisely around the same time or a little even earlier than the dollar capped. Now, the last, since 2019, the dollar and gold and silver, especially gold, have been rising in tandem. Gold rising faster than the dollar. Silver rising faster than the dollar. And those are the arrows on the far right side. The blue line being the dollar index. The silver line being the silver. And you can see both the dollar and silver rising at the same time. We saw that in 2016. Unlike when 2010 and 11, when they were going in the opposite directions. Now, as I mentioned, this can happen, is happening, and will happen, but if there is a sustained issue with negative interest rates, people concerned about trade wars, recessions, whatever they're worried about, the dollar will only be allowed to go so high because a too strong dollar will collapse Emerging markets first, and is not going to help the United States either. So you're not going to see a dollar index at 200. They would act way before that. But you could see, I'm not predicting, you could see silver at 50. And you could see gold at 2,500. But the dollar index is not going to be riding that wave with gold and silver. But you can see when silver got to 50, the dollar index was 73. Right now... 
the dollar index is way the hell up there. And uh, the dollar index can come down. My point is the dollar index can only rise so far before it starts to come down. But when it comes down, it probably doesn't mean that silver is going to go down with it. It means that silver probably continue to rise because if there's dollar weakness, that is the opposite of gold and silver. And gold and silver will gain against the dollar if the dollar has to be capped and brought back down. All right. I think we might want to just, yeah, we got to look at the silver stockpiles. Now, we look at this every week. This is the last thing we're going to look at. Then we're going to talk about Dizzy Miss Lizzie and our friend Bernie. And then we're going to take your comments. So silver ETF demand, we've been following this now for a couple of months. You can see it's just on the move. And remember, I mentioned this a couple of months ago, maybe three months ago, that increased volume in open interest, and the COMEX increased money or funds flowing into ETFs was a precursor to a price move. And it turned out to be exactly right. Silver went from 15, 16, all the way up to 19. And you can see that big vertical rise on the far right. And it's still happening. Even last week where you say, well, you know, the price went down. Well, let's take a look at how much money poured in the last four weeks in the last couple of days. So here's the chart. Um... Another 483,000 ounces went in on Friday into the silver ETF. No, into SIVR. Nothing went in on net basis on SLV. But the four-week change is up. They're both up over 5%. Sprott up 3% in the last four weeks. And the last four weeks, all these different depositories, ETFs, silver funds, up about 3%. Uh, and that's been going up every every week for the last uh, two or three months now. Um, iShares SLV at nearly 400 million ounces. That's a lot. SIVR, uh, 113 million. Central Fund of Canada, which is owned by Spot, now 57 million. Um, PSLV at 61 million. So that's Sprott has, you know, 120 million ounces in stockpile. Uh, Gold Money, Bullion Vault, both have about 25 30 million ounces. Perth Mint's got about 7 million ounces. So lots of silver being stockpiled. And uh, the COMEX, I don't have those charts for you tonight only because they're they're not very interesting this week. They didn't change much from last week. If you're interested in those charts, you can go look at last week's uh, small gold. If you go under the silver, if you go under the silver tab on smallgold.com, you can check out those charts or you can find the YouTuber bit shoot. From last Saturday, it would be a week from today, week back from today, Saturday Night Silver with Small Gold. And you can see how much silver is in those uh, COMEX vaults from JP Morgan to Brinks to Coins and Things, CNT. And you could see that overall the total change in the last four weeks is basically 0 0.10 down. So not, but those already, those those COMEX warehouses have already filled up with silver in the in the past four or five months. They've just slowed down and adding some. All right, I think that's it on the silver. That's a lot of silver for you guys to absorb. Uh, yeah, tomorrow we're going to talk about the gold back you want and something about um, China, but I'm not going to mention that tonight. Oh, here's just the general, yeah, just something I already mentioned. No matter how strong the dollar gets, uh, it does have a cap on the upside. No, if you get momentum on it, neither the U.S. nor the world can live with a dollar index doubling from here. But gold, silver, and crypto can all up five times, and no one would bat an eye. I think that's a lot different this time than last time. And if you go back to that chart, it's very clear. You could see silver rising, the dollar index going down. That couldn't continue in that direction. Right now, we don't have that scenario. We've got both of them rising. All right, let's see if there's anything else. Silver stuff. Nope. Okay, let's look at Dizzy Miss Lizzie and Bernie. Now, these are the guys. You're either going to get Jumpin' Joe Biden, Sleepy Joe, Bernie Sanders, or Elizabeth Warren, or Kamala Harris. That's probably it. Maybe Pete Buttigieg. I doubt it. None of them are strong. Most of them are taking positions that the mainstream really does not like. I mean, Biden says he's going to eliminate guns that have more than one round in them. I mean, other than a shotgun, there's not many guns you can buy that don't have multiple round cartridges. I mean, you can get a musket and you can pack it in there and shoot off one round at a time. He wants to do an executive order on that. 
He wants to eliminate fossil fuels. Uh, Elizabeth Warren said today she wants to eliminate fracking. I mean, they want to promote, she's promoting the Green New Deal. Uh, Bernie Sanders wants free health care, free college, and now he's saying uh, we're going to have to eliminate all medical debt because if you owe money because you went to the doctor, then we want to make sure that you don't have to pay that money. Uh, this stuff is just, um, I mean, if you put him up against somebody who's actually going to, and some Democrats have tried to question, like, where are you going to come up with all the money for this? How are you going to pay for this? And generally because they're in, like, an audience where people believe that stuff, they they hiss and boo the, the, the sober Democrats who ask that question, so they never really have to answer. They, they answer in very trite ways, like, we can't afford not to pay for everybody's college because in today's society, everybody needs a college education because they need to learn that. So... I don't know how it's going to go. He's probably the strongest candidate, which is pretty funny. Um, and then you have Dizzy Miss Lizzie. What was she saying? Uh-oh. <laughs> I mean, she's still got to get past the Indian thing. Um, yeah, here she's saying, uh, Elizabeth Warren and the radical Green New Deal Democrats have eyes set on America's straws, cheeseburgers, light bulbs to change our energy consumption. And and she was saying, uh, I, I, I just... She, she was going on about light bulbs and uh, cheeseburgers and we're going to have to cut back. They want a meat tax. I, most people are going to say, what are you, out of your mind? That you're running for president on a meat tax, like to make sure that uh, people don't have a hamburger and they don't have a Coke with a straw in it. And I mean, there's bigger problems. Well, I guess they don't think there's bigger problems in the world. They think, we got 10 years to figure this out. All right. Well, there we go. Let's get rid of Dizzy Miss Lizzie. Let's get rid of... Bernie, let's give her. Oh, and um, Jumpin' Joe, the other day he was talking to some woman, holding on to her hand, squeezing her hand. The video goes on for a minute, and she's like trying to get away, and he's like moving his face into her. I mean, he's already been called out on this kind of uh, creepy Joe stuff, and he doesn't seem to, to care. I guess, I guess that's the way he is. He just he gets touchy feely, and um, but again, in the Me Too movement, he's, he's sitting there. <laughs> basically making sure this woman listens to him and that he's holding and then he takes both hands i wish i had the picture of it for you right now it just came to mind he's got both hands on her hand so she can't get away from him and that has nothing to do with politics that's just that's just bad form i suppose to do that it's okay you do it once and then someone tells you don't do that like you you don't like hold on to someone's hand and and don't let them leave I and mean, maybe you know he didn't realize he was doing it but uh it's clear that uh, he does it all the time. All right, well, let's now make the pitch for the mugs and the pitch for all of the small gold ways you can help the channel out. If you've enjoyed this program, you enjoyed. I think Roger was saying this. He thinks, at least one person thinks, that the small gold uh, live streams not only provide good information, but they provide a place for a good group of people to come and meet. And I, I agree with that. Uh, it is a public service, so you do enjoy that help. Help the small gold site out. I mentioned I'm up to 21 and maybe 22 patrons, so a whopping $96 a month. Very grateful for that, but uh, obviously doesn't even pay the hosting bills for smallgold.com. Um, but you can support small gold by becoming a patron or joining on Subscribestar. An issue with Subscribestar, not to get the violin out, you have to have $150 in Subscribestar and five current subscribe star members now i do have three fine individuals who have donated i think it's almost a hundred some odd dollars but i won't even be able to take that money out until i hit 150 and i get at least two more and no one quits <laughs> subscribe star so you can see that this is not uh, for the faint of heart you even if you think you have money coming to you you don't unless you start to build up a large cadre of people who are willing to pay each and every month small amounts or large amounts um, and i do get from time to time people do send me some very generous donations i've received some large light do litecoin donations some checks some paypals one-offs and so on so i do appreciate that and all of your uh, donating options are up on the screen you can always buy small gold mugs if you order the classic and super classic i send them directly here from smallgold.com you want to pay for anything in Bitcoin or Litecoin, let me know, and uh, I will give you a discount on those as well. So shoot me an email, uh, smallgold at gmail.com. If you want to pay with Litecoin or pay with Bitcoin, or you just want to make a donation, hold up your phone if you've got a loaf wallet or a Bitcoin wallet to the QR code, and you can donate that way. 
All right, let's see what we got in the comments over tonight. We've got a group of silver stackers listening in. As I mentioned, Roger was saying, good morning, everyone. Lewis, your live streams provide information. They also provide a live community to connect with. Yes, indeed. And I said a real public service. Philip Quinn is here. Silas Barreto says, Harry Krishna. Hello. Fiona says, hello, team. Avarial Blackwood. I'm guessing they can't resist those no Ganesha silver round designs. I don't know. I haven't seen Ganesha silver rounds. I'm sure they have them. But they are cool. Ganesha. Uh, Avril Black Lewis, did you ever get your Jemmy samples? I don't know what Jemmy samples are. I don't know what Jemmys are. Hmm. Please advise Avril Blackwig what are Jemmy samples. Is it something you sent to me or something I said I was getting and I don't know what we're talking about? Okay. Roger, wow, silver imports are almost as much as Bix Weir's hoard, <laughs> says Roger. 33,000. 33 million a month. Jeez, that's right. 33 million ounces a month. Now, that's a big month, but I mean, they could do, and they have done, I think they did 327 million ounces, 327 million ounces in 2015, 8,500, no, 273 million ounces when they did 8,506 tons, 8,500 tons of silver. Um, unbelievable. To 275 million ounces about. And Hollam is here. She's generally here every night. When I'm here, at least. Uh, let's see. Anything else? We got any other questions? You guys always have your chats here. Philip Quinn, I like to check out the silver price at the end of the week. It's so volatile, it drives you crazy. Yeah, well, try following the cryptocurrencies. They're even, they're even worse. Up and down, up and down. Abra Edgy will probably be repressed until the U.S. muscles down China in the trade war and keeping the dollar strong at any cost. Hmm. I don't know how strong they want it to be. I mean, they've been rising together at the same time. I, I do think that this time is different in that, well, first of all, silver hasn't taken off the way it took off in 2011. I think, yes, if silver were to get to 60 and gold to 2,500, then they might start worrying about the price of gold and silver. I don't think they're worried about it right now. All right, when all the facts are behind paywalls, all that's left are narratives and small gold, unless uh, I'm behind a paywall too. Got to think of that as well. But that is true. All these narratives, most of them are just total and complete BS. The gold back yuan, China to crush the dollar, COMEX default, Shemitah, JP Morgan buying silver. Not only are they false, they're widely disseminated. And widely consumed the channels i mentioned i have 21 it's not just that i have 21 patrons it's that i have like fourth not even four thousand subscribers on youtube the channels that promote this crap you can be like a secondary or tertiary silver channel you can have 15 20 000. all you got to do is is say okay well today what i'm gonna do is uh, i got a box here of silver i just came in from misty but i'm gonna open it up and show you guys okay so what i got here is a quarter and i got uh, a silver nickel isn't that pretty and uh yeah i think silver's a good deal right now and uh i think that uh yeah thanks for listening to the channel tomorrow night i'm gonna open up another box of silver i mean you can get you can get 15 20 000 subscribers to that kind of stuff and, of course, if you start talking about uh, Q, my mom, and all that, you're going to get 100,000 views. But if you want real analysis from someone who actually takes a look at this stuff and does a decent Bernie Sanders imitation, then you should be on this. You should subscribe. You should donate. You should tell your friends. It's otherwise, I can just talk to myself. All right. Coins in the house, says Philip. This is a long pause. I don't know what she's talking about. All right. Let's see what else. Fiona Whale and Small and don't discount platinum as a jewel as jewelry. No, I didn't discount it. I did mention it was jewelry. Metals, diamonds look much better in platinum. And now here we got the yes, they they do. There are people who prefer a platinum setting. That is definitely true. Um, it's better than white gold too. Yes, there's definitely demand for it. But it, but again, it's not in general. People don't know what they're doing, and they don't have a specific taste, and they're not designers. They're gonna snag some i would say cheap gold jewelry but they're just gonna gold is like buying uh 
It's like ordering a hamburger at a restaurant, at a, at a moderate restaurant. There's just more demand for that than there is for uh, some fancy crepe or quiche or something. That's what that's what platinum is. You don't see it that much. There's not that many places that sell crepes. Yeah, it's much easier to get a hamburger. But I, I'm not against platinum, and I know there is demand for it, but it's nowhere near the uh, the gold demand. But, uh, that is true. Let's see. You guys are talking about Russia, mental issues, Marxist, Roger, Fiona Whalen, Smogel. Biden is the biggest loser of all Dem and then crooks. The amount of trouble he created in Ukraine is unimaginable. Well, the funny thing about Biden is he's not getting a pounding for his son and his Russian connection and his Ukraine stuff. They're just focusing on how out to lunch he is and how he's slurring his words and groping people. Um, no one's even focused on his Obama year time. Compromat. All right. Avril Blackwig. Fiona offered some to you last cast or so. I don't know what Jemmy slammed for gems. She didn't offer me any gems. What gems did she offer me? News to me. Fiona, did you offer me some gems? That would be quite nice. I doubt anyone is offering gems. Uh, Avril Blackwig, I'd love to see you and Jason do a combo show again. You know, you go back. Actually, I'll show you this one with Jason. The other day, someone with Jason, the guy thing was Jason, Jason Osario. Good guy, was on the small gold subscriber sound off. He was saying, like, do I believe Jason's theory on dollar shores in China? And, and I mentioned, oh, well, that's not Jason's theory because it's not. Um, what I didn't get to do was... If you don't know Jason Barak's channel, it's very good. Um, just because he didn't invent the dollar shortage there doesn't mean he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's a very good channel. He's been doing live streams for the last six or seven months, really improved uh, the viewage on his channel, and uh, it's become a very uh, well-attended channel. Um, but one of the things I was mentioning was prior to... I mean, I've been on this anti-gold pumper, silver pumper thing for years, I was mentioning that Jason used to, and he's he's announces he doesn't believe it anymore. He used to have on Bill Holter, he used to have on Jim Rickards, he used to have on Jim Willie, and he kind of half believed all that, you know, gold to the moon, silver to the moon, and he believed that gold back you on nonsense. But I remember I had a conversation with him back in, and Jason, as he said, you know, I the facts change. I, I don't just stick to a position. Here's Jason in uh, November 2017. Quoting me, I, either a conversation I had with him, either on his show or maybe it was a text message. Gold is far more likely to go up on problems in China rather than a gold back yuan. Small gold. That's what I said. And uh, I was tweeting that even before he mentioned that. There you go. In 2017, um, I was saying, here, let's see, where is China and gold? Yep. There you go. October 2017, I tweeted this. Gold far more likely to skyrocket on collapse of Chinese markets, stock, bond, currency, than any gold back you on BS story. So I've been right on this stuff, and I've convinced other people, but there's still some people who refuse to throw in the towel. In fact, I saw on Real Vision, it was interesting, because they were, Grant Williams was a big gold back you on guy too. Yeah, anything that favors gold, they're going to be in favor of. But I just question why Raul Paul, whatever his name is, yeah, he told us this, and he's, anyway, he was interviewing Kyle Bess, who's long been on this anti-China train. And uh, why they're showing an interview of him in February, from February, him basically saying that China's a house of cards, because I guess it's so obvious now. Because those guys were generally in favor of China. China was going to crush the dollar and she this and China that and Sun Tzu and, you know, China knows what it's doing and the Petro yawn. Remember all that? I guess they finally realized that it's time to trot out uh, some sanity with Kyle Bass. And to Jason's credit, he's dropped that whole China to crush the dollar narrative too. In fact, he spends a lot of time on his channel. You can check it out. Uh, talking about the problems that China has. I mean, these are these are obvious to me for years, but the problem is that when you get these pumper channels, they, they just pump, they, they're anti, they, they become anti-United States, pro-China, merely because of some narrative that China's buying gold hand over fist and Sun Tzu says, and unbelievable. And there was many gold pumpers, and they've 
kind of toned that down a bit. Um, but, uh, you know, the United States, bad, China, good. But here is in March 2018, gold rising on tariff terminal. This is 2018. This is well over a year ago. Gold will more likely soar if China's bubble burst due to strain of tariffs than, any, than because of any gold back yuan or gold convertible yuan BS story. I've been on this since 2016. This The China is it, it's not going to crush the dollar. Game changer, end of dollar hegemony. All the pumper channels, Jason included, were all over that story. Always talking about China to crush the dollar, end of dollar hegemony, dollar collapse, that whole story. No, Rongo Star. Never been on that train. I was on that train in 2009, 10, 11, 12, and in 2013 when the Fed said, we're not doing this anymore. That's when I realized they were serious and they continued pumping that story. And as I saw, China went in overdrive and the Fed slammed the brakes on and they still kept talking about China to crush the dollar because it sold, got clicks or whatever, SDR, all this nonsense. All right, sorry for the diversion there. Um, let's see what else we have coming up in the comment section. Let's see what we got here. Jerome Powell. I think we might be done here. I'm going to put the fundraiser back on. There you go. All right. Uh, Biden. <laughs> Phillips says small gold mug unboxing videos would be nice. I think James Henry Anderson was planning on doing one, but then he opened the box. He forgot to do it. But he did buy a nice small gold mug, and he sent me a picture of the small gold mug with the SD bullion mug, which is kind of interesting. Oh. Fiona says, I wanted to send you some samples of Russian gems. I asked you if it's okay, but you didn't come. I guess I didn't see it. No, that's very kind of you. Um, is there something that we can like look at and discuss? I could take pictures of them and we can go through them on, on, um, one of the shows. Yeah, please. Um, don't say anything too valuable in, in the mail. If there's something that there's some particular story you want me to cover, we'll take a look at them. Um, okay. Gold convertible you on BS story. It was. Every channel pumped that story. Mike Baloney was talking about, oh, and Jim Rickards was talking about it. Well, what's going to happen is China's going to force uh, Saudi Arabia to pay for the oil in uh, yuan. And then uh, well, Saudi Arabia said, what are we going to do with these yuan? Well, you just bring them over to the Shanghai Gold Exchange and we'll, we'll exchange them for gold. Total nonsense. There's no fact or basis for that story. It wouldn't make any sense for China to do that. And it also undercut one of their biggest BS arguments that everyone wanted the Chinese yuan. Well, then they were saying, well, no one really wants it and they're going to have to exchange it for gold. And then they changed it into, well, uh, yeah, when I when I pointed out and so did Coase Jansen that no gold is going to be leaving China. First of all, that would be the stupidest thing China would ever do because they'd be out of gold in no time. I don't care how much they have. If you told them all you had to do is exchange and trade the yuan that they gave you and you can get gold, that's basically saying they're going to pay you in gold. Well, then, then you're done. Um, but what happened was when, once they realized that they said, oh, well, what's going to happen is, uh, it, what's going to happen is that China is going to force Saudi Arabia to pay in yuan, uh, except yuan. And then what Saudi Arabia is going to do is they're going to go out and they're going to take the yuan and they're going to buy gold with it, creating massive gold demand. Now, first of all, that's the stupidest thing too, because right now, anybody who accepts dollars for their oil, like Saudi Arabia, Nothing stopping them from going out and buying gold right now. But they don't do it. See, they, they don't understand that the rest of the world... In other words, when you pitch that story to gold fanatics, they think that the whole world thinks, oh, how do I get more gold? Not realizing there's nothing stopping any country, any producer, anyone with cash from buying gold. Anyway. Yes, thank you for repeating that offer. I didn't even know it existed, but yes, we'll take a look at it. Uh, you guys are talking about gems. Russian diamonds. All right. Emeralds. Yeah. Licking emeralds would give you beryllium poisoning. E interesting. I didn't know that. I'd be very interested to see what kind of gems come small gold's way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she should run a gem channel. <laughs> Gem shield, gem bullet, copper shield, copper bullet, whatever. You can do gem pumping. Gems are most useful in our lives. We could not lead our lives without gems. Gems set the skyrocket. All right. Well, I think we're going to have to let you all go. What we can do is 
if Fiona is willing, I could do a small gold subscriber sound off and maybe she doesn't even have to send me the gems. She can just show them and I can show them on screen. But I am interested in looking at them. So anyway, we can discuss that, Fiona. And uh, I want to thank everyone for joining me tonight. Tomorrow is Solid Gold Sunday with Small Gold. And then we have to take each day as it comes on the Small Gold channel. So have a good night. Bernie. Have a good night, Bernie. That's right. A good night is one where everyone can wait in line and get food. Because, you know, they say that if you live in a communist country, that the people are waiting in line for the food. But that's a good thing. Because in, in the poor countries, the rich are eating all the food. And the poor starve to death. So it's a good thing when you can wait in line and get yourself a good meal. And then maybe you can even go to college. Because your belly is full and you'll be able to take the courses and understand economics. Have a good night.